Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a green-white plus one plus one counter synergy deck as suggested by my supporters on Patreon. And the deck features a ton of new additions from March of the Machine, one of the main build-around cards being a Dusk Legion Duelist, a 2-mana 2-2 two -two with Vigilance, saying whenever one or more plus one plus one counters are put on the Duelist, draw a card, but this ability only triggers once each turn, can still potentially trigger during the opponent's turn as well, and we've got a few ways to accomplish that. So the Duelist is an excellent 2-drop that will function as our card draw engine in this deck. And then another amazing payoff card is Ozolith, the Shattered Spire. Ozolith, finally playable and standard. The 2-mana Legendary Artifact says if one or more plus one counters would be put on an artifact or creature we control, we get an additional one of those counters, so your typical hardened scales effect. And then for one and a green we can also tap Ozolith to activate it and put a plus one plus one counter on target artifact or creature we control, so that will result in two of those counters. And we can also cycle it for two mana in case we happen to draw multiples. And then we also have four copies of Botanical Brawler, a 0-0 that enters with two plus one plus one counters on it, has built-in trample, and says whenever one or more plus one counters are put on another permanent we control, if it's the first time those counters have been put on that permanent, put a plus one plus one counter on Botanical Brawler. And you would be surprised at how quickly the Brawler gets out of hand in this deck, as almost every card synergizes with those plus one plus one counters. And then our final new addition from March of the Machine are the two copies of Invasion of Gobakan, a battle that will enter the battlefield exiling a non-land card from the opponent's hand that they can cast at an increased cost of two mana. So kind of your elite spellbinder effect, if you will. And then it only takes three damage to transform Invasion into a Light Shield Array, an enchantment saying at the beginning of your end step, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature that attacked this turn. And then we can also sacrifice the array at any point to give our creatures hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. So this could maybe protect our team from a sweeper effect, which is one of the main weaknesses of a creature strategy like this one. And then getting those counters end of turn can also quickly add up, especially with the Botanical Brawler, as we mentioned. And then looking at our one drops, we're also playing four copies of Teething Wormlet, and that's the reason why you see so many artifacts in this deck as well, to synergize with the Wormlet, which will gain Death Touch if we control three or more of them. And whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under our control, we gain one life. If it's the first time this ability has resolved this turn, we also get to put a plus one plus one counter on the Wormlet. So a turn one Wormlet into a turn two Ocelith will result in a three three Wormlet as it picks up two plus one counters, and that will only get better from there. And then we also have four copies of Iron Apprentice, which is another creature that enters with a number of plus one counters on it. So Perfect alongside Ozolith will help grow a Brawler as soon as we play it, essentially. And when it dies, we can also move its counters to another creature, which is another nice way of maybe helping us chum block opposing creatures, move the counters, and then we can maybe move them onto the Duelist to draw, or move them onto another creature to grow a Brawler. So there is a ton of synergies there as well. And then a Skrelv, another artifact creature that can protect our key two drops, like our Duelist, like our Brawler, and some of the important three drops, like Steel Seraph as well, which is a key card to help break board stalls. If we don't have a huge trampling Brawler, then we might want to give, let's say, a Duelist flying to fly over a board stall, or help us uh, raise a red deck by giving a lifelink, for instance. And then there's also the Simian Simulacrum as another artifact creature that can distribute plus one counters when it enters, can also unearth it from the graveyard, giving us a bit more game against control strategies, and then it can also trigger the Wormlet as an artifact creature, so it can also represent a lot of extra damage out of nowhere. And then there's Siege Veteran, which is one of the better follow-ups to a turn to Dusk Legion Duelist, which also happens to be a soldier, so if it dies with a Siege Veteran out, we can maybe replace it with a 1-1 token, and then every turn we get to put a plus one plus one counter on a target creature we control, so on turn 3 we can uh, draw a card right away. And then topping off our curve, two copies of the Wandering Emperor, which can also add plus one counters to our creatures, can maybe catch the opponent off guard if they're not playing around it. And then at the minus two ability, exiling a tapped creature also gives us a little bit of removal, which we otherwise don't really have. 
And then last but not least, two copies of Clay Champion, which can be a great mana sink if we have a lot of extra mana, but for the most part gonna cast it for four mana total, for double green, double white typically, and that will result in a 2-2 Clay Champion with three plus one plus rank counters on it, so a 5-5, five, five, but could be even bigger with an Ozolith out, and we also get to put a plus one plus rank counter on each of two different creatures, so it can maybe draw a card with Duelist, with an Ozolith that's four extra plus one counters total, and then of course I get to grow a Brawler as well, so a ton of great synergy with Clay Champion here as well. And then the mana base has 12 different green-white dual lands, which also helps keep the land count low, only 22 lands, but that's also because the curve of our deck is relatively low. And then of course Boseju and Taiganjo offering a tiny bit more interaction. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with a hand that uh, yeah could work out fine, especially if we Pick up more ways to put counters on Duelist, although it can always activate Ozolith. Put on blue-red, another Duelist. Sure, we'll play one out here. Can start applying a bit of pressure, and if we top deck, let's say a Siege Veteran, we're off to the races. Is our opponent a Grixis deck, which is going to be packing a lot of removal. Voltage Surge kills Duelist. Let's be mana efficient, play Steel Seraph, and then next turn can maybe double spell Ozolith and Duelist. Seraph survives, go for the throat, which is relevant. As our opponent runs out, Harvester. So now I'm less interested in exposing Duelist to the Harvester's ability, and instead I could play Ozolith and activate it on Steel Seraph. Also have the option of using Boseju on the blood token, but that seems kind of sketchy to set up. So yeah, let's just play Boseju. Play also Lith and activate. And then next turn I can play Duelist, activate Ozolith. And lifelink seems fine here. Okay. Opponent did not have another Voltage Surge, which could have dealt for damage to the Seraph before picking up plus one counters. Opponent may be considering using the Blood Token here. Alright, discarding Explosive Singularity, Sir Opponent. A Hidetsugu combo deck looking to deal 20 damage in one hit. But we already gained five, so they're gonna need to come up with a little bit more damage. So I think we stick to the plan, Duelists, and then uh, put counters on it. Seraph can go for lifelink once again. And we'll see if they have an answer this time around. Okay, that worked. Have to activate it now. And we might see removal in response. No, just a cycled Xander's Lounge. And another Ozolith. Can always cycle it, luckily. So it being a legendary has its drawbacks, but... There's Hidetsuga and Kairi. Undoubtedly putting another Singularity on top of their deck. So we'll have to see how we want to handle that situation. My Ganjo is interesting, so start by cycling Ozolith, maybe play Brushline for that first. Picked up another Duelist, now let's activate Ozolith on Duelist I think instead of Seraph. Get to draw a card, 6-6 six, six, attacks into a 5-4, and Skrelv also a decent pickup. So let's give Duelist flying. And then just attack with Duelists. And then if they want to chump, they can chump. Alright, opponent's gonna take it down to four. Play Skrelv. So your opponent drew whatever they brainstormed on top. But possible they put Singularity second card down. So what could still kill us is a 6-mana Chandra killing their own Hidatsuga and Kairi, and then doubling the Explosive Singularity for 20 damage, plus 10 more from Hidatsugu's ability. 
but doesn't seem to be the case. Opponent cycles lounge. And a Brotherhood's End, destroying artifacts, is incredibly effective here. Gets rid of everything except Duelist. Okay, so we're still in trouble. For now, could replay Ozolith, or we can just cast a Simulacrum. Go Ozolith into Simulacrum, and then we can still play another Duelist afterwards. But let's see what we draw first. Alright, Brawler might be better here for Trample. So get in for 9. Opponent's good to jump. Now Hidatsugu can attack for 5. But then we would still be safe from 20 damage. And the Hasty Simulacrum with Unearth could also come in handy if there's another board wipe. Corpse Appraiser goes digging, presents another blocker. Although now if we activate Ozolith on, let's say, the Simulacrum here, we also grow Brawler at the same time, which tramples, so we would have three lethal attackers. But our opponent's got three more mana to interact. And a Fable presents another blocker, so our opponent's going to be blocking with all three creatures here. I think I'm still better off putting counters on the Simulacrum, so then I wouldn't get to draw with our Duelists, but that seems fine. Because if I, let's say, play another Duelist, put the counters there, I still get a 5-5 Brawler. But now our opponent can just take the two from Simulacrum. So forcing them to chump seems better. Yeah, turns out our third copy of Ozolith still had its uses. Opponent falls to three. Yeah, that's a good triggers in the blind here, revealing a shielded. Okay, so next turn we can unearth Simulacrum, or we can do it now just to draw off Duelist. I think getting the extra attacker is probably fine since we have plenty of mana to work with. The one argument may be putting counters on Duelist would save it from 3 damage from another Brotherhood's end. Or potentially 2 damage from Voltage Surge. Although next turn I could unearth Simulacrum, put counters on it with Ozolith and present another lethal attacker. So yeah, Bone's gonna have to go digging here. The early lifelink hits from our uh, Steel Serve definitely made a difference. Otherwise they could have set up the one hit KO. There we see Chandra that I mentioned earlier. Go for the throat, that's a clean answer for Duelist. And another Fable. So on the board, we could present lethal. Veteran also helps. So if I go for Simulacrum. Counters on Duelists. Now I can just play a Siege Veteran. Or we could go Brawler, activate also Lith, which is maybe still better. And attack all out. Alright, so we got to see our deck play against some more controlling strategy in a long grindy game, and it certainly delivered. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and this hand has a lot of potential if we draw forest, but I don't think I can risk it. Okay, I guess we'll keep this one. And one Brawler can maybe go, that way if we pick up two lands, Clay Champion's a nice Curve Topper. Definitely need some help off the top. Invasion could be okay. Gonna take a while to set up. It looks like our opponent's got to cut down for Wormlet. Yeah, let's just play Invasion, since I don't think Brawler is surviving. Go for the Throats, Archfiend, and Invoke Despair. All of those are all problematic in their own way. Probably grab the Archfiend. Make it cost 6 mana, so we're not under any immediate pressure. And then at least Simulacrum and Clay Champion dodge Go for the Throats. 
Now I can place Kralf, which then protects future creatures from go for the throat as well. But our lack of mana is gonna come back to bite us here. If our opponent just casts an Invoke Despair, I didn't see us recovering. And have to keep Skralf back to protect Brawler. Right, opponent's going for it anyway. Possible they have another one in hand. Alright, it's just going to be an Invoke Despair. Now I can maybe sack Skrelv. And play another Brawler to grow the first one. So we can transform the invasion. Okay. So if we're being stuck on two lanes, we're doing okay. Ooh, Shieldred's gonna be tough. Maybe Steel Seraph giving a lifelink can outrace it. Apprentice a draw. So if I play Apprentice, at least I get to grow Brawler. And they will also help grow each other. So we can actually attack into Shieldred. So, yeah, not a bad little one drop here. Looks like her opponent has another cutdown in hand, but killing Apprentice doesn't really help their situation. So, yeah, attack for 11. Opponent takes it. And we get to grow both Brawlers once again with the array. If Apprentice chumps Shieldred, I get to put even more counters on the Brawlers in the opponent's turn. Could be that to another Invoke Despair, of course. Although, let's see, does this protect us against an Invoke? It does not trespass her, can gain them some life back and drain us. Go for the throat, forces an area activation. So we could still be in it. And there's our third land. So Steel Seraph giving flying doesn't really accomplish much. So it would be a lifelinking Steel Seraph versus just playing a Simon Simulacrum, which has to be better here. We get to add two counters, then the Brawler gets to grow the other Brawler, which in turn grows the original one. So yeah, let's go for it. So we've got 18 points of trample damage, meaning our opponent has to block with both of their creatures to survive, so they can trade for one of them and then still fall to two. But yeah, now we're not dead to another Invoke Despair, and we still have a huge Brawler threatening lethal next turn. And our opponent explodes, wow! Actually won a game where we got stuck on two lines for a while, facing Invoke Despair. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine looking hand. Apprentice into Brawler, and then turn three we can maybe play and transform Invasion in the same turn. But we'll see here if uh, that's the best sequencing possible we want to play Invasion on turn two. Against a red deck. Yeah, they could certainly have a burn spell to take out Brawler before we manage to grow it. So then going turn 2 Invasion, turn 3 Brawler plus Apprentice could work out better. For now a Phoenix Chick. So let's have a look. And indeed, double Lightning Strike and a play with Fire. It's gonna be a difficult hand to beat. So... At this point, maybe make the adversary more expensive. Could also take the play with fire, kind of forcing the opponent to next turn play adversary attack, in which case they'll be tapped out. But if I go Brawler into Apprentice, it's still a 3-3 that dies to a Lightning Strike. So, I'll take adversary. 
Although I don't love my current position. And also Lith would go a long way. You can play also Lith, play Apprentice, and then get my creatures out of range. Bonon did opt for Swiss Spear, play with fire just going face. Okay. Take three. And another Brawler was a good draw. So now they're probably gonna Lightning Strike the original Brawler. And then I'm probably better off attacking the Invasion. And then we'll see if they keep Swift Spear on defense or if they uh, try and protect the Invasion after all. But of course the red player is going to attack, so I'll take it. And the Duelist could also come in handy. So let's play Brawler here. Does not seem like they have another play with fire. Yeah, let's attack with the other one so we can get extra counters for more transformed invasion. The brawler is going to get huge. And they might want to take out Duelist now with another lightning strike. So we've got a 4-4 creature. That's what we were hoping for. The apprentices are starting to get bigger. So this is kind of the turning point in the game where we have a better board presence and we got to try and leverage it into a quick kill before the opponent manages to burn us out with their lightning strike, various flying creatures. Uh, land the draw is not what we needed. Okay, probably attack all out and then we get to add a ton of counters with the array end of turn. Which also draws with a duelist. Could still maybe top deck a wandering emperor. So do I play farmland? Don't think there's a real reason to. So next turn we're certainly presenting lethal. But can our opponent deal 10 damage? Double lightning strike would still not be quite enough here since they kill duelists. Swiss Spear goes up to 3 power, 5, 6, plus another 3 puts us to 1. And the air opponent explodes, awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand has a ton of potential, especially once we pick up a second green source. Can't quite play Wormlet turn 1, but I'm still gonna keep. Triple Wormlet with Ocelith is where we want to be for most games. Picked up an untapped green source, perfect, so we get to play double Wormlets and then next turn third Wormlet into Ocelith. Opponent on a four color deck it seems, so now I'm terrified of a sweeper. Could just be spot removal here, I guess even Leyline Binding, although the damage will have been done for the most part. They can prevent the doubling of the plus one counters, but we'll still get to trigger Wormlet. And yeah, it looks like Binding is going to go after Ozolith here after all. Nope, never mind. Triple 3-3 three, three Wormlets on turn 3. Get in for 6. And next turn with a Simon Simulacrum we can add even more counters. Opponent did have the Leyline Binding, but... Uh, yeah, they should have exiled Ozolith in response to all those triggers. That's the advantage of playing lesser known cards. It's gonna be a Contagious Vorak next. So definitely it looks like an Atraxa deck. Looking to put a 7-7 Flying Lifelink in play. Steel Seraph an interesting draw. Is it better than Simulacrum? No, I think Simulacrum might still be slightly better. Adding more power and toughness to the board. Bonus likely chumping. And then if there is a sweeper, at least this way, we get a bit of unearthed value. 
A drag to the bottom could be effective. Although our opponent doesn't have a double black. Just plays a fable. That's not gonna cut it here. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. Seeing the power of Wormlet here alongside Ozolith, even if for just one turn. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And our hand's okay, not amazing. Definitely missing a good 2-drop. But uh, hopefully one will show up in time. Up against the blue deck, and there's a nice 2-drop. Perfect. Could be up against a mono blue hottie gin deck. Never mind, a darker waste into Bankbuster, so blue white. Go with a Siege Veteran, counter on Apprentice, which grows Brawler. And hit for 5. So we've got a good amount of pressure. Seraph to fly over any blockers. Just gotta watch out for a sweeper now. So the Emperor as an instant speed threat could be nice. And there we see a Siege Shark to synergize with a potential Tezzeret on turn 4. Okay, so we've got a few options. Flying from Steel Seraph is not going to make a huge difference. So maybe play Iganjo so we can attack and potentially set up an ambush with a Wandering Emperor. Opponent won't be able to crew the Bankbuster just yet. Could also tank with a Siege Veteran, but then they're definitely blocking Siege Veteran. Whereas I want him to block with a Siege Shark on Apprentice. I hope you're ready to Remember your training. Now Emperor's potentially exposed to Bankbuster pressuring it, but if that's the case, her opponent's dead on the way back, taking 10. So yeah, Poon just got a draw here and explodes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Wormlet into Duelist and then Simulacrum to grow it and draw some cards up against what could be green-white enchantments. So they tend to have a few removal spells in enchantment form, which are probably going to make the difference here. And a turn to Naturalist is always powerful, so we're already on the back foot. Enchantment's a more established archetype for sure, that's been around for a while. But also a deck that will probably cease to exist once rotation happens. Whereas it seems like our deck still has a lot of relatively new tools that will stay after rotation. All the cards from the Brothers War, all the artifacts, and then some of the new additions from March of the Machine. And yeah, there's the ossification that we mentioned earlier. Opponents pretty far ahead on board, getting to cast all their enchantments on the cheap. So now I'm thinking second Wormlet plus Duelists. And to wait on the Simulacrum, maybe play Champion next turn. And not gonna chump with the Wormlets, I don't see us double blocking or triple blocking. So I'll just get in for one. So Clay Champion has to stabilize us next turn. But it may be too late. Another restoration. Two counters on Naturalists, which is gonna make it hard to race. So we'll need to somehow make a creature that's bigger than a naturalist with double visitor to keep growing it. They are offering the trade for visitor, but of course they can get it back next turn with a restoration. So I'll take it. Down to four. So time for Clay Champion. Targeting Duelist and Wormlet. Okay, and then Duelist has Vigilance, gets to attack. Now we can maybe set up some double blocks, but if there's more enchants. That's probably not going to happen, and the uh, Catilda discarded can also be disturbed here. And that should be game. 10 10 flying a lifelink. That should do it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Wormlet into Brawler. 
We'll have to see for turn three. No cut down for now. And the turn to underdog. Another wormlet will have to wait. So maybe turn three siege veteran and then turn four wormlet into seraph, trigger both wormlets at once. Opponent's playing blue as well. Second underdog. And Skrelf, also an artifact. Still kind of liking the uh, Siege Veteran play here. And I'll put a counter on probably the Wormlet, since they didn't have a cutdown earlier. I don't need to play around a future one necessarily on Veteran, but it's always an option. So we'll spread out the wealth. And don't want to trade Brawler for Underdog, since the Brawler's going to get much bigger. Liliana can make a sacrifice of Wormlet here. You know about the Raven Man. Oh, I've always hated crows. And then we'll play another Wormlet into Steel Seraph. Or I could play Skrelv to protect my creatures going forward. Can take out Liliana regardless by giving flying with a Steel Seraph here. But then we do miss out on a bunch of counters on the Wormlet, so I think I still go Wormlet into Seraph. They had plenty of opportunities to use spot removal so far. And then Steel Seraph can fly the veteran to take out Liliana. And counter on itself perhaps as well. And if our opponent wants to trade for both underdogs, that's fine by me. Opponent accepts. Maybe could have been a reason to send Brawler at Liliana and Veteran flying over, but then they probably wouldn't have double blocked. So I think this is okay. Go for the third kills Veteran. But her opponent doesn't have a board presence here, and Formants discard Brushland. And Skrelv will grow the Wormlet once again. There is an argument for potentially holding thickets to make them overvalue another discard effect. And it's not like I really need a fifth mana source. So sure. Right, there's the invasion to make us discard, but don't really care. And another informants when we're already empty handed. Opponent hangs back, duel is the draw. So we'll keep on flying the wormlets. And we'll use Skrull for protection. And then next turn, if our opponent's fully tapped out, I could also activate Skrull on Duelist so it can attack past the opponent's black creatures and then deal a damage total. Opponent's got one card left. Now there's probably no reason to take any unnecessary risks. Can maybe fly the duelist and then attack with the wormlet on the ground, forcing them to chum block. But we keep Skrelv available for any instant speed removal. If a card like Meat Hook Massacre were still in standards, I would probably take a different approach here. Opponent falls to two. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Probably looking at Wormlets into Brawler and then play a bunch of artifacts afterwards. Although against a red deck, how does that change matters? Yeah, kind of want to play Skrull first now to protect the Brawler. And the Wormlet, which can also gain us life back. And then Steel Surf is going to be awesome against the red deck. Flame Breather certainly points towards a build featuring Mechanized Warfare. So we could try and snipe it with the Invasion. 
So that's a close call here. Also at the same time need to get on the board since we're about to take at least four damage. So it's a tough call for sure. I think I still play Brawler first. And then we'll see next turn if we want to double spell Invasion and Wormlet or if we just get a Steel Serve down. Mechanized Warfare would definitely hurt. It's going to be a Swift Spear instead. Okay, so we're spared the Warfare. A Reckless Impulse can maybe find one. A Lightning Strike and another Kumano, not bad. So yeah, definitely a nice start from the red deck. Do we trade for etching? Feels pretty bad. I think growing Brawler and then giving it lifelink is probably one of our best avenues to victory, so I have to take six. And another Brawler. So time for Steel Seraph. And then next turn we can potentially double spell. Opponent's kind of forced to play the cards in exile, so it didn't seem all that important to play Invasion last turn either. So we can block the etching with a Steel Seraph at least. And Lightning Strike goes upstairs. If they went for Steel Seraph, it would have cost me two life instead of three, so this makes more sense. But yeah, we're going to take another three after blocking Flame Breather. So important turn coming up. Get to play Invasion and another Brawler. Slow down the opponent's hands while growing Brawler at the same time. Blood Feather, Kumano, and another Flame Breather. I think we... Probably go for Flame Breather here. Brawler against Lifelink. We'll leave the Steel Serve back on defense, or do we? I guess we can guarantee transforming the invasion if we do it like this. We gain 3 up to 8. I have a 3-3 three, three blocker back. Yeah, we should be fine. And then the Brawlers picking up extra counters here with the invasions also quite nice. I have not gotten the opportunity to gain life with a Wormlet yet, but if we top deck another artifact we can make that happen. So this might be their last chance to burn us out. Kumano step one. Down to six we go, so if they top decked another lightning strike, or even a play with fire, we could be dead. Could have been a reason to exile the Kumano with uh, invasion as opposed to the flame breather to make it harder for them to double spell. And a stoke the flames. Yeah, that's gonna put us to one here, if I'm not mistaken. Can block Swift Spear. And then we should still be fine. Okay, so make sure not to tap my brush line for colored mana. And uh, yeah, play some more creatures to the board. Definitely give the biggest brawler lifelink. And then how many creatures can I afford to attack with? If I attack with all, that's 13, not quite lethal. So keeping an extra brawler back is probably safest. And then we still get the benefit of growing both brawlers thanks to the array. So we go back up to 6. And next turn we're certainly presenting lethal. Got three blockers back, a Skrelf that can protect a blocker as well. 
So I can't think of much that would save them here. Opponent's gonna go for the all-out attack, hoping for the best. And this is the most damage we can prevent. Could also activate the array here. Fall to five. And that should do it. Awesome. Very close game here against Monorets to close out this series. And yeah, overall quite impressed by some of the synergies in the green-white plus one counter deck. Now it's probably not going to take over the standard metagame, still a creature deck that's quite vulnerable to removal, so any mid-range deck, especially decks like Grixis, are going to be able to prey on a creature deck like this. But uh, yeah, especially looking towards rotation, like I mentioned in the game against uh, green-white enchantments, a lot of the core cards in this deck will stay after rotation, so that's maybe the time for this deck to shine once it still has all these powerful tools and a lot of other decks will lose some of its key pieces. There's definitely a lot of ways to approach this green-white plus one counter deck. Some of the cards I've tried include Homestead Courage, Hopeful Initiates has great synergy with the Brawler as they can keep growing each other, Gala Greeters is quite nice with a Wormlet as you can make artifact tokens with it, the Beast Caller is great in any green creature deck, and so is the Bloated Contaminator, which can also proliferate to give you more plus one counters. Doomscar Warrior at 4 mana, another recent addition, can also maybe generate some card advantage. And then the various Elspeth Planeswalkers, Archangel Elspeth and Elspeth Resplendent. These last ones could be especially useful as a sideboard option in the more controlling matchups, where the opponent might have a lot of sweeper effects, then you can try and bring in more Planeswalkers to give you a bit more staying power. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. I wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.